Hello everyone. In this session, we're going to be taking a look at trust authentication within a domain or forest and security ID filtering. We're going to start with trust authentication. We have two modes of authentication. You have domain-wide or forest-wide authentication, and then we have selective authentication. Let's talk about domain-wide or forest-wide authentication first. Here we have two domains. Let's call the first domain on the left the trusting domain. The trusting domain is the domain that will contain the resources, the files, the folders, that the trusted domain needs to have access to. The trusted domain would be the domain with the users that need to access the resources over to the domain on the left, the trusted domain. When we are configuring authentication, you have the choice of either doing forest-wide, domain-wide, or selective authentication. If you choose any of these, domain-wide or forest-wide, what will happen is that all the trusted users will be able to access all computers in the trusted domain. So whatever the computers have, they have files, they have folders, they have documents, the users in the trusted domain are able to access those resources once the administrator has given permission for them to do so. Now let's look at the difference to this scenario and compare it with the scenario where we have selective authentication. In selective authentication, the users in the trusted domain are allowed to authenticate only for services on computers that you specify. So you might have a particular file server and on that file server you have certain folders and files that you want the users in the trusted domain to access. You're only going to give permission for those particular folders or files or a particular server so that the user does not have access to everything in the trusted domain. The user only has access to certain resources, hence the word selective authentication. Here we can see when we are creating the trust, an outgoing trust, you have your choice. You can select the scope of authentication. And the first one here is forest wide. And for this type of authentication, users from the specified forest are going to be able to access resources from all of the folders, the files, everything in the other domain. It should be the local domain. Users from the trusted domain are going to be able to access these resources. You want to use this option when you have more than one forest belonging to the same organization so that everybody can have access to all the resources. But if you have an organization where you have different forests belonging to different organizations, you might very well want to configure selective authentication. This means that Windows will not automatically authenticate users from the specified forest for any resource in the local forest. Only some resources. So you'll be granting individual access 
to each domain and server that you want to make available to users in the specified point. So within the trusting domain, you're going to decide that you want to make available information on a particular server. And on that server, you're going to make accessible only certain files and folders or only certain computers. So that's the, the difference then between the selective and the forest wide authentication. For the selective again, you simply make a choice of what you want to make accessible. For the forest wide, where you have both forests most likely belonging to the same organization, then you give access to everything. We want to turn our attention to security ID filtering. Security ID filtering is a security measure that is set on all trusts to prevent malicious users who have domain or enterprise administrator level access in a trusted forest from granting to themselves or other user accounts in their forest what we refer to as elevated user rights to a trusting forest. In order to understand security ID filtering, we first have to understand what we call security ID history. Let's take a look at the scenario that we have here. We have domain A, domain B, and domain C. Domain B is a trusting domain. That means that that's a domain that has all the resources. Domain C is a trusted domain. And that means that that's a domain that has the users who would like to get access to the resources in domain B. Now let's talk about this SID history. Let's say in domain A, we have some users who need to be migrated to domain C. So we migrate these users to domain C. Once the users have been migrated to domain C, the users will get new a new security ID. But this new security ID will not be able to access the resources that were available in domain A because a security ID is tied to a resource. So what happens here? is that if the resources from A are moved to C, then the security ID that was tied to the domain A users who have now been migrated, they will come across to domain C, but those IDs go into an object that we call security ID history. So the new user here will have the new user ID for the C domain, but they will also have the security ID history, which would be their ID that they had when they were in domain A. And remember that that security ID has to come across to C because it's tied to the resources that were in the A domain. Now, let's say a user within the trusted domain, a user perhaps with administrative credentials, could take that security ID history from a user who has permission to the trusting domain and they can attach that security ID history to a new user, thereby giving that new user permission to access 
the resources from the trust and domain. We refer to that as elevated privileges. Ele elevated privileges is a method of gaining access by granting unauthorized user rights to a user. This is known as the elevation of privilege attack. In an elevation of privilege attack, an attacker might apply the security ID of a domain administrator located in a trusting forest to the security ID history attribute of the attacker's own account in the trusted forest. And this means that that user would get a ticket that would automatically include that new security ID. And then the user can then use that ticket to access resources in the trusted forest, in the trusting forest that is, the forest that has the resources. When the attacker requests the use of a resource, the access control mechanism considers all security IDs in the authorization data to determine if that security principal or user has the rights to complete the requested action. And as, I, as we said before, the security ID is going to be tied to the resource. So if a user has a security ID, the user is going to be granted permission to that resource. In our scenario here, we have the trusted users being granted permission to access resources in domain B, which is the trust in domain. When security filtering is enabled, which it is enabled by default, it causes the domain controllers in domain B, which is a trust in domain, to remove all security IDs that aren't members of the trusted domain. So in the trusted domain, remember, we would have had the users that were migrated from A so they would have the security ID from the A domain. They would also have the security ID that they got when they first joined domain C. When security filtering is enabled, what will happen is that the domain controller again in B will remove all the security IDs that it sees that were related to domain A because all it wants to do is to give access to the people in domain C. So if the domain C, if the name of that domain is contoso.com, then the security IDs will have jbrown at contoso.com and when the trust in domain is giving authentication privileges it's only going to allow users with the name contoso.com to have access to their resources without security filtering then the security id history of that user, which is now included with the user information, will also be available. In other words, if a user in a trusted domain is a member of groups in other domains in the forest, the trusting domain will remove those group security IDs from the user's access token. And that is what we refer to as security ID filtering. In our session today, to recap, we took a look at 
authentication, domain wide and forest wide authentication versus selective authentication. We also looked at security ID filtering, which prevents elevation of privilege attack. This is the end of our session, and I want to thank you for listening.